Om Namah Shivaya students, this is Tulika ma'am, I am your chemistry teacher. This is the third part of the chapter fiber to fabric. In the earlier two videos, we have learnt about wool and how they are used to make woolen fibers. In this video, we are going to learn about silk. Now before we proceed further, I want everyone to take out your class for copy and pen and write down the important points which are being discussed in the video in your class for copy. Now silk is known as the queen of textiles. It is believed that the production of silk occurred nearly 5000 years ago in China. There is a story the empress of the emperor Huang Ti. She went to the garden where in the garden there were many mulberry trees. She found that white worms were eating the mulberry leaves and accidentally she, a cocoon fell into her cup of tea and a tangle of delicate threads began to separate from the cocoon. This is how the silk was discovered. For thousands of years, the Chinese kept the production of silk a secret. They began trading silk along the silk route in the 13th century. Hundreds of years after that, the, a Chinese princess is believed to have smuggled the eggs of silk moth out of China and thus the people in Europe and other Asian countries learnt the production of silk from caterpillars. This production of silk from caterpillars is known as sericulture. Silk is mainly produced in China, India, Southeast Asia and Japan. Silk is an animal fiber. It is made by the caterpillars of silk moth. It is a very fine but strong fiber. It is shiny and lustrous as well as it is costly. There are different types of silk. For example, tashar silk, muga silk, kosha silk, eri silk, etc. These different kinds of silk are produced by different kinds of silk moth. Mulberry silk is the most common silk moth and gives you the best quality of silk. The silk moth which produces mulberry silk, they eat the leaves of mulberry tree. Tashar silk. Tashar silk, they are mostly produced in Madhya Pradesh, Orissa and Behaviour. The silk worm which produce tashar silk, they eat the leaves of Arjun tree. Muga silk, they are produced in Assam. Eri silk, they are produced in Assam and Orissa and these silkworm which produce the eri silk, they feed on castor leaves. This rearing of silkworms for obtaining silk is known as sericulture. This is the silk moth. The male silk moth is shorter than the female silk moth. From the silk moth, the, sil the silkworm comes, which is also known as larva or caterpillar. Here the, it is mulberry leaves and this is mulberry leaves, which the mulberry silk moth eats. The mulberry silk moth is also known as bombyx modi. B O M B Y X M O R I Now let us see the life cycle of silk moth or a life cycle of a silk moth The female silk moth lays eggs The eggs are yellow in color After few days the eggs turn gray in color and they hatch after 14 days they hatch to from larva the larva is known as caterpillar also so what happens the female silk moth they lay eggs the eggs are first yellow in color and after that they turn gray and after 14 days the eggs from the eggs the larva comes out after hatching the tiny caterpillars they grow in size they need to eat to grow in size and therefore they are fed with mulberry leaves. 
Once the caterpillars are about a month old, they stop eating and they turn yellow in color. Then they weave a net and enclose itself. They knot their head in the shape of their eight and from their head there are salivary glands and from their head a liquid comes out which solidifies on exposure to air and forms cocoon. This stage is known as pupa. So what happens? The first the silk moth lays eggs. After they lay eggs, the eggs hatch into larva which is also known as caterpillar and then they grow into pupa. What is pupa? It is a stage in the life cycle of silkworm. What happens in pupa? During pupa, when the it is a stage, during pupa, the silkworm, it weaves a net and enclose itself. It nods its head, nod means move its head in the shape of eight and it forms a cocoon around itself. The cocoon, it protects the silkworm. So when it nods its head, a liquid protein comes out from the salivary glands. The liquid, it solidifies. It becomes solid when it is exposed to air and forms the cocoon. The silkworm now lives in the cocoon for some time and after that it comes the cocoon after and after that the cocoon breaks and from there a beautiful silk moth comes out. So this is the life cycle of silk moth. So first what happens? The eggs are laid on the mulberry leaves. After the eggs, the eggs hatch to form silkworm or caterpillar or larva. And after that they form cocoon. This stage is also known as pupa. Cocoon is the outermost covering. And after that inside the cocoon the silk worm it develops. And finally it breaks the, the cocoon breaks and from there a beautiful silk moth comes out. So cocoon is like this the outside covering and inside what is present the silk moth is the silk worm is present the outside covering is known as cocoon it is protecting the silk worm so let us now see how silk is produced from silk moth first the eggs are laid, laid by the silk moth the eggs are stored over clean cloth or paper strips when larva or caterpillar are hatched from the eggs, they are kept in clean bamboo tree trays with fresh leaves of mulberry. The larva eats the leaves of mulberry trees for about 20 to 25 days and after that they are moved into tiny chambers which are made from bamboo and where they start spinning the cocoon. How they spin the cocoon? Already I have told you. They start secreting liquid protein from their salivary glands in their head. They nod their head in the shape of eight and from there a liquid protein comes out. This liquid protein solidifies on exposure to air and forms the cocoon. The cocoons get harder, hardened because of exposure to air. Now when the cocoon is formed... The person who are associated with this sericulture process, they take the cocoon and they put it in boiling water. They do not allow the silk worm inside the cocoon to further develop. So the cocoons are boiled in hot water and from there the silk fiber is separated out by machines. This process by which the silk fiber is separated out from the cocoon by putting them in hot water is known as reeling of silk. And finally the silk thread which is obtained is woven into different kinds of cloths. So see here the process of reeling of silk is being given in the diagrams. Here the cocoons are being put in boiling hot water and from here the silk threads comes out 
and finally the yarn is made the yarn is being dyed into different colors and finally the cloths of silk are made so i think you have learned about the production of silk you will draw the different life cycles of silk moth in your class work in the white page you have to draw this diagram in the class work copy the silk that is produced is natural silk it is made from mulberry silk bomb now there is artificial silk also artificial silk is known as rayon it is it looks like silk but it is not natural silk but it is cheaper in cheaper also now how you are going to understand which is natural silk and which is artificial silk when you burn natural silk it gives you the smell of burning hair but when you burn artificial silk which is also known as rayon it will give the sm smell of burning paper because rayon is made from wood pulp which contains cellulose the wood is taken a pulp is made pulp is a paste it paste is made so the wood contains cellulose and thus which is a carbohydrate and therefore if you burn it it will give you the smell of burning paper so like this you can identify which is a natural silk and which is a artificial silk so in this video we have learned about pro properties of silk what is sericulture how silk was discovered life cycle of silk moth and how silk is produced from silk moth thank you namashivaya